Well, good morning, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. And today I decided to start the vlog with a little bit of exercise. We're not going up to Griffith Park. We're not going up to Runyon Canyon. We're gonna go back to the stairs and I'm gonna try out a new technique that I had seen online about doing stairs just to strengthen up my legs and just to get a little bit stronger. Ever since I had that surgery, I have not gotten back into a good routine of exercise and I was really going pretty good before then. So I wanna start it back up today and look at that cat. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. So seeing this office chair makes me think of something funny that we uh, we were talking about in Sweden when I was on that trip was in Michael's kitchen, he had noticed that his dad had removed one of the kitchen table chairs and replaced it with his office chair. And Michael said, Dad, you are officially getting old when you've done that. So when we went out to that, kind of that swap meet flea market thing out there, I um, I saw a person selling a hodgepodge of different office chairs like that and I said, Michael, we should buy three completely different ones and take them back and replace all your dad's chairs with those and see what he says. And he told his dad later and his dad started laughing. <laughs> he also thought it was a great idea. <laughs> well, I guess next time I can bring my horse and tie it up. Oh, and speaking of Sweden, um, one of the friends that I made while I was in Sweden is actually here, and I'm gonna hang out with her this week. Pretty excited, because we had a blast. We were, um, we were actually dance partners at the wedding. <laughs> yeah, I was dancing at the wedding. Well, I have never stopped and taken a look at this building, and as I was walking by, I was like, wow, that is a really awesome door. And then I'll show you what this building is, because I just saw noticed there's a plaque. You can almost see hidden faces in there, can't you? Or is it just me? Do you see those faces? Like right there, it kind of looks like a clown face, doesn't it? And then this is what it is. Think about that for a while. I wonder exactly where this tradition of having lions at the entrance of your doorways came from. Where did that originate? Curious. You see it all over the world. So the goal with this exercise today is basically you go up all these flights of stairs, two stairs at a time, and you have both hands behind the back of your head so that you're um, kind of like you pretty much have perfect posture and you're opening up your chest and then you basically breathe through your nose the whole time and you take your time going up but you do that as much as you can and hopefully supposedly it's supposed to be a good total body workout we'll see not yet wait what is that is that like a ram head here we are, the entrance to Hollywood land. The two stone gates. And I'm sure I've shown you this before, but on the other side they have a little library. Like right here, on the other side of the street. I don't know what that is. Oh, I do know what that is. But on that other side, right in that one, they have a little one of those little free libraries. Now there's the historic Hollywood land realty company that the sign originated from and then this beautiful house right there is actually he doesn't live in it but it's owned by and lived in the family of Ned Beatty. Here's the little Beechwood Market over here and the restaurant. And then unfortunately this empty space right here used to be the Hollywood Land Antiques. That guy was great. He, I'm so glad I got to vlog that while he was here. Some cool stuff. Now there are actually handfuls of these stairs all over this neighborhood, but I'm going to a spot where there's like two, one right across from each other, and I'll probably do both of them. All right, gang, well, we made it. Here are some of the stairs that I'm gonna do. There's actually like handfuls of these stairs all over this neighborhood, but I'm gonna start with these and then go across the street and probably do the ones by Bela Lugosi's old house. And then if you follow that street and, cur and it curls up a little bit, there's like another two sets that keep going up. I might do those as well, we'll see. All right, let's do it. 
And unfortunately, I can't very well film it if I'm gonna have to have both hands behind back of my head in a perfect posture position, so I'll catch up to you in a little bit. Well, we made it. First trip up. Man. I'm feeling it. Definitely feeling it. Definitely in the abs and the chest and ribs. All right, we made it down here. I think I'm gonna walk across the street and do the other side now. Guess somebody's on a no carb diet. Look at this odd thing. City of LA time switch. That's bizarre. Never heard it, never seen one before. All right, here we go. See you guys in a few. All right, and back down. I'm gonna do a couple more of these, but I'm not gonna film them so I can concentrate, guys. See you in a little bit. This is kind of interesting. I don't really know what the story is, but there's just one patch of concrete right here on the sidewalk. And it has a few like little mosaic pieces, those little tiles right there, and then there's stuff kind of embossed, or what is that? Not embossed, debossed, yeah, embossed, I guess. And it looks like a person sitting in a chair right there, doesn't it? I don't know what the story is here, but there's one centerpiece right there. Is that Ganesh? All right, back over here, last one. All right, well, we're done with going to the top. Let's go ahead and go back down and walk back home. That's a pretty good workout because it's about a mile or so to walk here and then a mile or so to walk back. Plus, I'm gonna be walking around today and going and doing some other stuff, so. Whew, good way to start the day. Ah! All right, gang, well, I'm showered, and I think I'm gonna take John out to the park. I don't know, we'll hop in the car and see where we end up. Let's go. Well, that's right, guys, park time. Pretty empty out here, but I wanted to give him a chance to go run around. I didn't take him with me earlier because the sun came out, and I, it's hard to judge how hot it gets out here, and he can't take it because of the black hair, so come on over, friend. Welp, this incredible building in front of me is actually a house in this neighborhood called the Wolf's Lair. And it was actually designed by a man named Wolf to resemble a Norman castle. Now, what's kind of interesting about this is that he had all kinds of little secret passageways and things built into this. Like, what you're looking at here is actually like a uh, Lautner, Frank Lloyd Wright inspired designed house. So it was designed by Lautner based off of Frank Lloyd Wright's style. Now there's actually another driveway you can see through the uh, top of the gate that continues back into another house. And I actually used to deliver food here when Moby lived here. He recently sold the house, but right here in this front um, section right here is a little guest house, but below it was a secret apartment that um, I guess from what I read still to this day has the original bamboo piano and a lot of the decor from when he originally finished it. But what he would do was he would um, have his wife living in the main house and then he would entertain starlets and let them sleep in this little the well basically the undergrounds of this what they call the gatehouse and you can tell why they would call it that just by looking at it right there they said he would hide his starlets there and he would promise them all kinds of promises as you can imagine and one of the ones that they he said was that uh he would say that somebody who lived in the main house could help their career. It was actually his wife, but he would just tell them that so that they wouldn't want to go to the big house. And it's stated or claimed that throughout time that Doris Day had lived here, um, the Beatles, but that's kind of unconfirmed. The only ones that are famous that have really been able to be confirmed were um, Shelley Duvall. 
used to be engaged to uh, a family member of the Reynolds family from the RJ Reynolds. So somebody just interrupted me, sorry. They say that Doris Day lived here and they say also that the, uh, the Beatles have lived here at one point or stayed here. But the only one that's really confirmed is Shelley Duvall. She was dating, um, like I said, uh, her fiance was a member of RJ Reynolds' family and he owned this at the time. Now, some of the pretty cool attributes to this are that, for one thing, it used to connect, or it was right next to um, Castillo de Lago, which was a house they say Bugsy Siegel used to run a uh, gambling ring out of, and Madonna used to live, and we'll cover that another time. But there, right here, kind of through the trees, you can see the other house back there. And they have even a uh, black painted pool so that it'll resemble a lagoon. And there's a fountain all kinds of stuff in there but they said that there's also a tiki bar that once acted as a speakeasy and that when Moby owned this place he actually turned it into a music room like a recording studio type thing and would um, kind of trip out his guests with the decor when he would let them do acid and then they would wander in there and it would like freak them out but this has been around since like 1928, even to the point of like one of the members of, one of the people who like founded Hollywood Land lived here at one point. So this was actually one of the main houses of this whole neighborhood at one point. Now the reason that this place pretty much looks identical the way it did when it was finished and the reason it's kind of trapped in time is because um, not only has it been well cared for and the people that have owned it have um, you know taken pride in owning it but at one point a man named Bob Crane owned it not the actor Bob Crane but a historian in Hollywood that buys up kind of well-known properties and restores them to as close to what is the original um, architecture as as he can find so he traced back some original photos of 1928 of when the house was finished and got it restored back to that and it's kind of stayed that way even when Moby bought this house in 2010 he dropped like two million dollars I think they said he bought it for three and a half million dollars he dropped two million dollars in kind of renovations and um, just repairing it and everything and then recently sold it for like 13 million dollars so it's pretty uh, well loved property here in Beechwood Now let's take a drive down the hill and we're going to take a look at it from the side. So now we've made it over to one of the side entrances. And they, uh, they say that there was all kinds of little tunnels that connected um, the guest house to the main house. And that's actually the main house right there. And there's one of the uh, towers there. Isn't that something? You can only imagine what kind of hidden secrets are behind these walls, right? And there you can see the view from the castle would have been the Hollywood sign on one side and on the other side would have been the reservoir that I've taken us to before. That's on the other side. Well, I had to stop in Trader Joe's to get something and I'm looking at this and I'm like, what? I'm there when you run out of toilet paper. You're welcome, tissue? All right, well, we're back from Trader Joe's, and if your curiosity was getting the better of you, this is all I got. Just a couple of salads and a wrap. It's pretty much it. Trying to eat a little healthy. Well, good evening, my friends. How are you, Lionhearts? I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the wolf lair today and uh, keeping me company on my exercise. I wanted to show the wolf lair before. I just didn't really know the story, so today I wanted to kind of share that story, especially because it's... One of the most well-known houses up in Beechwood Canyon, and uh, and I love it. So, there you go. Now you've seen the Wolf Lair, where Moby used to live, Shelley Duvall used to live, and all kinds of other people are rumored to have lived. So, I don't know. They say Charles Boyer lived there, I don't know. Anyway, have a great night. I wanted to thank uh, Carolyn Stewart for becoming my newest Patreon. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you to everybody who posted pictures today on the Facebook. 
of your new uh, Days with Tour on the Lion one year t-shirts. That was so cool of you to post those. Um, I had mentioned before that they had sent me an email saying that my image was rejected, but everybody that ordered a shirt said, well, they filled my order. I mean, it says it was shipped, so it was cool to, today to see everybody got their shirts and that the shirts look good, so thank you guys for supporting and um, helping keep this vlog going. I mean, it's some days I have days where I just feel like I don't really want to do it anymore, and then there are some days that like everybody's really cool and it's a lot of fun and I'm glad that I do it. So this was one of those days where I was kind of glad that I did it um, just because I saw all the comments from the Elvis Fest. Everybody was so happy that I went there and that makes it worth it. It really makes a difference. So thank you guys. Have a great night. I will see you tomorrow. I actually have my meeting with the, uh, the guy who might be my manager tomorrow. So I may or may not show that. He knows I'm a vlogger so he may be in the vlog tomorrow. Have a great night. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Goodbye.